Good morning students. We are discussing on railway and airport engineering. Previously we have discussed about some of the development of Indian railways and uh, we have started discussion about permanent way which is a part of our railway track. Yes. Well, uh, in today's lecture we will discuss about some of the components of railway and the next topic that will be covered that is the conning of rails. Well, uh, the components of railway tracks. Well, there are uh, many components of railway tracks, but few of them are a prime components. Without a railway track, cannot be constructed, and those are rails sleepers ballast sub ballast and embankment here in the figure a cross section and the actual uh, railway track is already been shown okay wherein these are the rails the perpendicular element that is the sleeper on which this rail and sleeper are settled those called as the ballast below that sub ballast is to be provided and the last layer of the railway track is considered as the embankment and discussing about their functions the first component that is rails well what is rail how we can define the rail well rails are steel girders placed on end to end to provide a level and continuous surface for the movement of trains. Talking about the functions of rails, the rails provide the level and continuous surface for the movement of trains. The rails provide a smooth pathway to the trains that the pathway has a very low friction while the friction between the wheels of train and the steel of the rails is about 20% of the friction between, between the pneumatic tires and the metallic roads. The rails serves as a lateral guide for the running of wheels. These rails carry the stress developed due to vertical loads those transmitted uh, to the rails through the axles and uh, wheels of rolling stokes that happens when the braking force is applied on the train so that it gives stress to the rails and that load is to be vertically transmitted to the ballast and also this may happen uh, because of the thermal expansion and contraction that is called as the thermal stresis. Then the rail transmit the heavy load of rolling stock to the large area of the formation through the sleepers and ballast. So these are the functions of the rails. Rail uh, is a kind of steel girder that is placed on end-to-end -to, -end to provide a level and continuous surface to the movement of the trains. Understood? So this was about the trains. The next component that is sleepers. Well, the sleeper are the members. Those are laid in a transverse direction under the rails for supporting and fixing them apart to the gauge distance are known as the sleeper. While talking about the functions of sleepers that to support the rail firmly and evenly than to hold the rails to the proper gauge. As you can see here a kind of uh, you know bolted connection or screw connection is there okay here the rails has to be fitted properly 
so that it can hold the rail with a proper gauge distance okay so the band to distribute the load those are coming on the rails over a large area so this rail transmit the load to the sleepers sleepers transmit that load to the blast and so on then to act as an elastic medium to absorb the vibration of the train when train moves there uh, you definitely uh, have feel that vibrations as well as when uh, you know when when the brake applied to the train it give uh, you know stress to the rails and also it give uh, you know a force to the sleepers also okay so to absorb that vibrations and force uh, the sleeper uh, are act as an elastic medium so that rails could not get damaged as well as uh, ballast can be protected also to maintain the alignment of the track and sleepers are also add stability of the permanent way so these are the main functions of the sleepers again let me define sleepers are the member those laid in the transverse direction under the rails for supporting and fixing to the rails at proper gauge distance okay the next that is the blast now what is ballast well railway ballast is the foundation of railway track and it provide just below the sleepers while the loads from the wheels of the train ultimately come on the ballast through the rails and sleepers while talking about the functions the ballast should be constructed to provide firm and level bed for the sleepers to rest to allow for maintaining the correct track level without disturbing the uh, railroad bed to drain off the water quickly and to keep the sleepers in a dry condition well also ballast discourage the growth of vegetation and also to protect the surface of formation and to form a particular elastic bed also to hold the sleepers in a position during the passage of trains and also to transmit and distribute the loads from the sleepers to the formation well ballast also provide the lateral stability to the track so these all are the proper functions of ballast okay here you can see this is the rail okay which is to be fitted with this sleepers and sleeper are resting on a particular ballast bed okay this ballast should have a particular slope it should have a particular grade of material that we will learn later on but as a brief this is the ballast and these are the functions of ballast why we are providing the ballast now after the ballast well sub ballast to be provided now what is sub ballast well it is a layer of murum gravel or a small aggregate which is provided between the ballast and the earthen embankment that is just to provide to drain off the water immediately okay so that is called as the sub ballast it is a kind of foundation of railway track which is provided below the sleepers well then after embankments well embankment is also known as a kind of formation and it is prepared by leveling the ground and uh, if necessary by cutting or filling that particular ground uh, basically the side slope that is provided to the embankment is 1 is to 2 okay so these are the main components 
from which a track is to be established. Those are rails, sleepers, ballast, sub ballast and the embankment. Just remember this and remember the functions of all these main components. So now let's discuss uh, one of the important topic that is the conning of wheel. Why uh, wheel uh, is to be uh, you know constructed or casted uh, in a conning shape. So what are the purpose behind that? The purpose of providing uh, conning shape to the wheels is to keep the train in uh, its central position of the rail while conning does not allow any sidewise movement on a stra uh, straight track okay so this is the reason why conning is to be applied and then also to allow the wheels to move uh, with the different distance on a curved track and thereby to reduce wear and tear because when train take curves okay there would be slightly uh, that gauge distance may be changed okay maybe there are very slight distance okay and that distance may uh, occur accident if conning is not provided or Okay, so to allow that movement of wheels, this conning shape is to be constructed or casted. Let's put some light on the theory of conning wheel. Well, here you can see in this figure, this is the conning shape of the wheel. Okay, so here the rim or flanges of the wheels are never mad or flat but they are in the shape of cone that shape of cone is to be at the slope of 1 is to 20 okay and that is known as the coning of wheel as uh, we have discussed in the purpose the coning of wheel is mainly done to maintain the vehicle in a central position with respect to the track wow now when the vehicle is moving on the leveled track, then the flanges of the wheels have that equal circumferences. But when the vehicle is moving along with the curved path, then in this case, the outer wheel has to cover a greater distance than the inner wheel. And also as the vehicle has a tendency to move the sideways towards the outer rail in that circumferences of the flanges of the inner wheel and this will help the outer wheel to cover a longer distance than the inner wheel. So that's uh, how the smooth riding can be produced by meaning or by providing the coning of wheel. So here you can see uh, this is the actual gauge distance but if the outer rail needs to cover the greater distance at that moment this wheel have this much flexibility to cover the outer rail okay and that's why the train can easily turn into the curve. So that's why the train can take easily a curve on the track. Okay. Now talking about some of the advantage of uh, this conning of wheel that it provides smooth riding which helps vehicle to negotiate the curve smoothly. Then it reduces wear and tear of the wheel flanges. Uh, Damage may be caused uh, due to this wear and tear because of the friction action of the rims with the inner faces of the rail top. But also it gives an option of lateral drift of the hinge with its wheels. Also to prevent to some extent the sleeping of the wheels. So all these are the advantages. And talking about some disadvantages, 
the pressure on the horizontal component with the force near the inner edge of outer rail has a tendency to wear the rail weakly. Also, the horizontal component has to turn the rail in an outward direction and hence the gauge may be widened. As we have uh, discussed earlier that at the curved place there may be possibility that the gauge may be get widened. Okay. Then if no base plate are provided, sleepers under the outer edge of the rail may be damaged. Well, with this, also there is one concept that is the tilting of ray. Well, uh, previously let me show you. Okay, this one. Here you can see this is a slight tilting of this ray. Already 1 is to 20 slope is already provided at the sleepers. But though we are providing a kind of tilting of rails at also 1 is to 20 so that this boat can uh, you know fixed at perpendicular angle. This tilting uh, are placed exactly vertical at the top surface of the rail will not come in the contact with wheels fully and whole pressure will be exerted on inner faces due to which the inner faces is worn over quickly. The concept of providing tilting rails that is uh, to avoid uh, the wear and tear of inner faces of the rails okay, and uh, give a proper uh, life or enhance the better life of the rails and the sleepers. Also to, uh, also to make the uniform wear and tear of the rail heads and to maintain the proper gauge distance this tilting of rails is to be provided with the conning of the wheels. Okay students so we are ending up today's session with this topic. Thank you so much for your kind attention. I will see you in the next lecture.